Hello, hello everyone. This is Eric at RC Monster Garage and what we got here today This is the Arma Limitless version 2 uh, And we're gonna show you this is Darren's car. We're gonna show you what's going on inside of it uh, He did really really pretty job on the paint It's look really cool later. We're gonna take it a little bit outside and show you how it looks. Let's start okay so let's start with first thing first so as you can see um they're in install over here the guns bananas uh wheels and those are the the foamy tires those are not the rubber uh, it seems to be that right now those are the going tires for for going fast uh, of course they're not going to balloon at you at all because it's foam but they're going to get eaten from a very bad surface so you have to be careful um although very nice paint job and everything uh i told darren that you need to do something uh, and i'm gonna put it on the video so you're gonna remember you need to make holes over here and you may have to make a hole over there the hole over here should cool up your motor a little bit and the hole over here should help cool up your esc that is very important but when you guys are going to see what size esc and motor we have inside you maybe say that it's uh, not really necessary, but if you want a long life for your motor, you probably want to do it. Now, let's gently remove the body. Look how nice this body is. Very, very simple to make it, and it ends up just beautiful. Okay, let's put it aside. And okay, Darren, jump in, and let's start talking about what we got inside over here. All right, so... Yeah, the tires you said already, those are the Gone Bananas, foams, hard compounds, so they'll last. These are what top speed runners are running. I'm not a top speed runner, <laughs> but all the top guys that are running these, they don't chunk. Well, they do chunk, but they'll at least last for the real high Now, speed. What, what speed did you get with this so far? So far, this one, I've only had this, what, I got this from you, what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Um, first, uh, I've done five runs on it, all between 128 and 132. Okay, 132, I think it's pretty good. Now, uh, speed controller. We have here the Castle Creation. What size Castle Creation you got over here? That's the XLX2. It probably looks a little bit different because I removed the fan off it for now. Um, no, no, you're good. Yeah, the fan, I removed the fan off it um, because the body fits a little bit better. It's a tight body. It fits a little bit better without it. And the thing is, this ESC runs so cool. And also the motor I have is a Castle 2028. And I say yesterday in 85 degree heat, I did three back-to-back -back 130 mile per hour runs with no cool down, no rest between them. And the motor was at 132 degrees and the ESC was about 110 or 112 degrees. So it really was a, and I built this not just to go only one run and done. I built it to be able to go a couple times and not have to worry about temps. Okay, now let's talk about those big gears you put here. You have a humongous gear. <laughs> yeah that's a 49 tooth pinion and the stock 39 tooth spur so far i just wanted to keep the car as stock as possible i haven't really done anything to it just put in the motor and esc and run so it's 10 teeth over geared but really as you can see with all the torque that these big motors have it doesn't heat up too much you can do you know back to back two three speed runs and you're good still now let's talk about those big plugs so we jumped from those uh xt90 to ec5 ic5 and now what are those look how big those things are yeah these are the eight millimeter qs8 plugs um these are anti-spark so you plug them in there's no spark in them and they flow a lot of juice the eight gauge wire so they're what you need pretty much yeah those are pretty hard to solder right like you cannot really do it with a small soldering iron um yeah, you just got to put a lot of solder in. They're easy to solder the wires in because they have so much room. Those bullets are so big that you have so much room to solder them in. But okay. the 8-gauge wire, yeah, that can be a little bit tough. Okay, and this is the pocket for your GPS? Yeah, yeah, because it's hard to find another space with so many okay, things. Okay, this is actually store. a pretty good place right yeah, in the and center. Actually, that was on there. I had it in there for the speed runs. I just put a little bit of tape on it there to hold it. And it's fine nothing fell out or anything now we don't have batteries here what batteries are you using right now for this um this is the v2 and the thing is these battery trays are smaller than the v1 as you saw okay because so that can make it a little bit tough if you're going to run on 8s usually 4s batteries are a little bigger i don't have batteries with me today but i had the i was using a china hobby line two 4s 5000 mah packs two 4s packs 
and those fit in there fine. I think these are 150 millimeters long by I think 70 millimeters wide. I'm not sure, but most speed run big batteries are going to be probably too big for this. Okay, and then uh, kind of last but not least, uh, wait, let's talk about servo. So servo, you're just using a regular 15 kilogram servo, I see. Yeah, that's the stock regular Arma servo. So far, you know, my experience with these, I've used them a lot. They're not as good as a, you know, as a good servo, but if you set the endpoints on them and you don't abuse it too much, for me, I've had good luck and they last. So far, I've ran this car five times with that servo and it runs straight as an arrow, no problem. But eventually, yeah, I'm going to replace it to something else. Okay, and then what is the receiver that we have here? We have dual antenna receiver, so you have a longer range. Uh, what yeah. is that? Yeah, I'm using, I don't have the transmitter with me, but that's a Flysky Noble uh, FGR4 transmitter. And this is the FGR4, I'm sorry, that's a Noble NB4 transmitter. And this is the FGR4 receiver. I added a second antenna to it at the 90 degree angle. And uh, I've had this receiver out to so far 1400 feet away and it uh and it picked up with no issues or interference so adding that second antenna really is good okay very good so okay next thing that we have to do is to watch this thing actually running uh let's put a body back on it real quick and we show like how how it's look again really nice cool project and let's show you guys again end result of course you have to slide the antenna through uh this body also it looks like a little bit thicker than the previous one it looks like it's two millimeter so i can see by the whole how thick it is it feels a little bit thicker yeah then the general is actually pretty good so don't forget people like subscribe and share if you have any questions uh just put it on the comment below and hopefully we can answer it see you in my next video don't forget like subscribe and share